Good afternoon, my friends. Brian with VetSource back again in the uh, off-site storage location where today we're going to explore a little bit more, get deeper into um, some of the optional equipment or the options that some of the C4 Corvettes came with. And we're going to go ahead and use our ZR1 trainer, our partially disassembled ZR1, so I can kind of show you. So what we're going to discuss further is, of course, the Delco uh, radio system installed in Corvettes. Now, in the early generations of Corvettes, they were known for uh, speed, luxury, not luxury, but speed, power, cool, good looks, you know, that kind of stuff. But the stereo systems were always kind of a afterthought. They, in fact, they really didn't have very much in the way of a good stereo system. And again, stereo systems are very subjective. It's a lot to uh, a person's taste and their ear and style of music they prefer. So anyway, with that being said... Uh, the C4 was the first generation where General Motors actually attempted, or Chevy attempted to develop a radio system that was comparable to the world-class capabilities, what they thought, of the car, and they actually invested quite a heavily bit of money into it. So this is where we began to see, in 84, the Delco Bose Gold Series uh, stereo systems, which was a partnership basically between Delco... Uh, GM and uh, Bo the Bose Corporation who was known for producing um, uh, speakers right and um, you know the first I think occurrence I believe if I remember correctly was the Cadillacs had them in the early 80s maybe the year before the Corvettes did I believe Delco was making their radios before then but uh, the C4 and 84 was the first year that they decided to go full out and develop uh, a more capable sound system now, there are actually two different generations of the sound systems, these Belco Bose systems in the Corvettes. First generation running from 84 to 89 is a little bit different. Uh, the enclosures are different, the locations. Uh, on the early C4s, the door, the door speakers, well, the front speakers are actually in the doors, versus the second generation system, which was in 1990 through 1996, which had, of course, the front speakers were in the footwell, and of course the rear speakers were still in the same in the back corner there. Now this also was a redesign of the speaker system from 90 through 96 and interestingly enough the 84 through 89's no Corvette actually came with a CD player. We were still in the era of um, cassette tapes where they had I think that the last 8 track was was it 78, 79? I don't remember. Um, but you could even get a CV radio in an 84 Corvette interestingly enough. So um, today what I'm going to do is I've got a system that's dismantled, uh, taken apart, so I'm going to show you a little bit more about this system and how that works. So let's walk over here to our speakers so you can see what we're working with here. There's our 92 black convertible. And uh, one of the things that GM, I guess, hoped to achieve with this was, and I seem to remember from the owner's manuals and such uh, when we talked about this, was the world-class sound system. Now, Bose Corporation, their stated mission, their mission statement was they wanted to replicate the uh, concert hall sound in your home, or in this case, in the vehicle, right, the automobile. And it's funny, Bose has a really interesting corporate history. If you go in and look at it, I don't have enough time to talk about it today. But uh, Bose literally was started by an MIT professor who had buyer's remorse for a high-end speaker system he bought, I think, in 1956. And then he started the Bose Corporation in the mid-60s. And just literally 20 years later, they were developing automobile systems for General Motors. And what's funny is that you'll hear even arguments among audiophiles whether or not they like Bose systems or whether they're the best or not the best. It's Again, it's such a subjective thing. I will say, though, that these do provide a very superior sound clarity and quality versus other systems I've heard. Now, you know, just go again straight to our book here where we talk about uh, the Bose system in general. So uh, in 1990, this is actually a 94 version, but this, this verbiage is all the same. They basically talk about the Delco G Bose GM, Delco GM Bose system uh, is an advanced automotive sound system that is tuned to the interior of the vehicle. The six speakers and four amplifiers and four enclosures are designed to deliver acoustically customized sound. This includes the shape and location of the windows, type of upholstery and carpeting, and the position of the passengers. The result is a carefully calculated distribution of sound. The sound does not seem to come from the speaker, which results in the resemblance 
of a live concert performance, which is exactly the mission statement of the Bose Corporation. So uh, interesting, it actually says here too, is that um, they even specify that the automotive environment can be a difficult one for sophisticated electronics and the CD player design takes into account many of the problems seen in automobiles. So they really put a lot of attention into this system uh, to make it very nice and, and very worthy. And I will say that back in the day, long ago, when I was selling new Corvettes, I actually would just pop the hoods on the C4s, put the put a cool soundtrack stereo uh, CD in there and play them on Saturday mornings when we typically had more customers coming in to look. And that was a good selling point because people would come around from the front of the dealership and go, what is it? what is playing this music and of course it was the Corvettes and of course I might have had a, a dead battery from time to two time or two but it worked actually so the system 90 through 96 actually had three different variations of the system it wasn't just one system so the base system here which is pictured and that's why again I love the service manuals so the um, the UM6 system right was not a Delco Bowles Gold this is what came in the car standard stock performance and you did not get uh, any options, and it was just a cassette player, and it did not have the basic, the this, the upgrades of the Delco Bose Gold. Then you could also pick the UU8 system, which was a Delco Bose Gold, which you can see that nomenclature on the cassette tape opening there. And it had the Delco Bose speakers, but did not have the CD player. Then of course the U1F, which was the one that a lot of, most people ordered, uh, had the CD player and the cassette because by 1990 cassettes were well on their way out the door um, Now over the years I have barely seen few of these um, In fact, I have one right here as a matter of fact and these I, I think I've probably counted a handful of them Over the so many cars I've dismantled over the years I've probably come across 20 or 30 of these these just were not common because if you were gonna pay upgrade for the Delco Bose Gold system, you were going to get the CD player as well. So, but interesting, they have three systems here, okay? Now, the other thing about this too is that the system itself wasn't terribly complicated. So, you had the radio control unit, which this is not the stereo, this is just the control head, right? Then you had the radio receiver, which this was actually what received the signal, right? And then you also had your rear speakers and your front speakers and then of course the electric antenna was tied into that system as well now what I would see a lot of times uh, in a lot of ways I came up with extra parts in my business was guys would come in and they would attempt to rip this piss poor as they called it system out of the car and put an aftermarket system in there an Alpine or Kenwood or boombox or whatever they wanted and again it's so subjective I never argue with anybody about what they want to do um, but the problem they would have is that they'd get into this and then they would mess up the whole system. And it's funny, they actually made a note here in the book talking about installing an add-on tape or CD player, a CB or the unit that uses the speakers on the vehicle may damage the auto system and impair operations of the added unit. So I'd have guys all the time come in, man, I put this in, it doesn't work right, I don't, it doesn't sound any good and, and they're confused and of course they get frustrated because the cost of these speakers uh, on the use side is rather expensive now again keeping in mind the simplicity right so this is your control unit this is your receiver that on 91 through 96s uh, I'm sorry 91 through 93s this is installed under the kick panel on the passenger side dash and again there's a good graphic here so you can see where it's at let's see Oh, I did. Oh, you know what? That's why it's a 94, 96. Okay, so the 91 through 93s, this is on the passenger side up under the kick panel, and it is a bear to get to. And if you've only got popping or crackling coming out of this, when you turn this on, a lot of times this is what's bad on this unit. This is what needs to be repaired or replaced. Um, and then on the 94 through 96s, what they did was they put this in the back storage compartment on the right-hand side along with the jack. So effectively, 94 through 96 is even though they have storage compartments, there are no storage compartments left because the left side is actually bolted down so you can't get into it for the ABS, ASR system. And the right hand side has uh, this and the styrofoam insert and the jack inside of it. So they effectively got rid of some of your storage space that used to be there, the cubby holes. And then of course, each one of these speakers, right, four speakers here. And these were, if I'm remembering correctly, these are 50-watt uh, power amps on each one 
and then of course the six and a half inch on driver right and then we've got a four and a half inch driver and then a tweeter on this one right here okay so essentially you've got three speakers six speakers driving the whole system with 50 watt amplifiers built into every single one of them okay now herein lies the problem you can see how corroded and rusty this one's gotten Let's see if i can get that off of there no that one's going to be stuck but you can see just by the bolts and things these get moisture in them and of course the circuit bearer boards fail and you can see there is a circuit board in there that that drives this and makes it work and i'm pretty sure that this has to do with part of how they're directing the sound because the whole point was with bose was a directed sound away from you to bounce off other objects or walls to create the symphony type sound which is what they were going for which was a rather unique idea but like i said a lot of people don't like it some people get confused by it and of course there's your um, same type of thing enclosure built into this that runs this speaker and directs some of the i'm guessing that's got to i don't know how that works you know again i'm not a true audiophile guys i do like music i like listen to music but i don't get in the nitty gritty so this has got to be some kind of echo chamber or something to make that work right or to make the sound uh, go where it's supposed to go in relation to in that automobile environment now the other thing too that people really got frustrated about as these got older and the amps would fail on them is that these front speakers are notorious for breaking the tabs they break like bad even low miles cars in fact i think on the zr1 back there both of my front speakers are broken uh, the tabs are broken on them now as long as you've got two of them in place you're going to be okay but they're still going to cause a little bit more rattling so if you hear rattling in the front sometimes pull your your kick panel your rocker cover and i guarantee you you're going to find those are got broken tabs these are pretty sturdy they didn't mess up like i said unless they got water but the interesting thing too about this is i still haven't figured out why they actually had the sets that were for the coupe right and then you can even see there coupe right front and then we also had convertible and they actually went to the trouble to put the tag on there to let you know one was for the coupe, one was convertible. I'm not sure the service manual does not spell out what the difference was in these and why they did that, but it is an interesting little factoid. If anybody has information, be sure to let us know in the comments below because I've never been able to figure out physically or the way they look what the difference is. It must be something about the way they, um, the sound, because I don't even think... Well, even those tubes are the same length between the two. So if anybody knows, it'd be interesting to add to the discussion to figure this out. Now, the other thing, too, about the bass speaker systems, if you ended up with a car with a bass, because I do have one viewer that has a bass car, and he was going through some trouble with the same thing, broken tabs on his edges here, and I'll show you here in a second. So here is your Delco Bose Gold speakers right here. Here are your bass speakers, Okay. They're, they're pretty flimsy looking, and, and just because I'm lucky, I had a bass speaker here. So this is a bass front speaker enclosure. I believe that's a right, uh, it's got to be a right front because of the way the tabs are. But again, looking at it, even on this one here, right, look at the tabs in the corner. They're broken, and, and that's, just, that's the pitiful speaker you got if you did not bother to pay for the optional upgrade. And I don't remember, I seem to think that the, the Delco Bose Gold system was included in the 1SB package. And then to get the CD player, I think was another $333. I may be off on that. It's been a while since I've looked at the window stickers for my cars, but I, and I forgot to look before I came out and looked at this, but um, definitely a unique system. Definitely a system that is worth salvaging if you're trying to keep your car original. Um, you know, I know the impulse is to uh, put something else in there. And the truth is, the newer technology just to me looks kind of jarring when you put it in there. It doesn't look right. It doesn't match with the rest of it. And, of course, this is the bass back speaker if you did not get um, the Delco Bose Gold system. So there's a, just a standard old 6x9 in an enclosure frame. And I, I think I've got one of those laying around somewhere. But the same thing. I just didn't get a lot of these because the guys that were ordering the cars at the dealerships, the buyers... We're not buying the base radio cars. Um, GM and Chevy and Bose did a really good job of marketing this to the masses. And I will say again, it, it's a shame because I don't have a real world example I can give you to show you how good it sounds. Um, on our, If you've watched me, you've been watching me for a while, you know I've got 
uh, the competition yellow LT4 with 20,000 miles on it. And it is a sound system that will blow people away. I don't, I'm, I'm lucky I don't have any failure of the amps, any crackling or popping. Um, and it just sounds fantastic. I mean, even my, my younger son that likes, uh, you know, some of that heavy music, he's like, it's amazing how good that system sounds being 25 years old. So I would say, you know, if you're looking at upgrades on your car, before you throw the baby out with the bath water, take in mind how good this system was engineered to begin with. And then make your decision because the truth is, yes, you're going to spend money. You know, there's probably $500 with the speakers sitting right here. If you can find these that are working, you know, they 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 fluctuate three to four or five hundred dollars. This radio receiver, 150 bucks. You can easily spend a thousand dollars on a Bose system to try to get it back right to make the car look original again. But again, it's just personal preference. So uh, that's going to wrap things up for me today, guys. I got to get in and. Uh, uh, process a lot of stuff as you can see the back of my truck's full so um we will be back next week with some more uh videos i think next week i'm going to talk about maybe i need to detail the fx3 system on the c4s because that's another one that gives people a lot of problems so uh, if you got any ideas or suggestions for videos you'd like to see by all means let me know uh this is kind of an open back and forth forum i'm going with here and I'm just detailing some of the, the stuff I've accumulated in my memory banks over all these years of doing this. So uh, had a good time, guys. Hope you enjoy the video. And uh, let me know what you think. I'll see you next week.